Greetings, and welcome to episode 55. In today's episode, we'll be talking about confidence. And more to the point, I'll be talking about how I achieved confidence. I don't know if that same thing will work for you, but I'm going to tell you how I did it. And we'll discuss confidence and the differences between, say, confidence and arrogance. Also, I wanted to point out that I need to start doing my videos earlier because the later I do them, the later they get published and then nobody gets to see it because, oh, I didn't see it because you posted it late. Anyway, <laughs> if we're ready, let's get started. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy. So, confidence, not arrogance, confidence. Confidence is something you have, and when you have it, it shows. Now, confidence is different from arrogance. Arrogance is dependent upon a status bestowed upon you, uh, well, like wealth the status bestowed upon you through wealth or position at whatever company you work for or perhaps you're part of some organization and you've achieved a high level of status within that organization people tend to be arrogant that is that's like a false confidence because arrogance depends on you believing that they're actually confident the, if you question arrogance it crumbles. It, it, it creates in a person a sense of panic and anger. That you're gonna, you're gonna bring me down. Well, you can't, if a conf, you can't bring down a confident person. You can't. If they're really confident. An arrogant person, you can bring them down easily. Very easily. It takes almost nothing. But confidence is real. It's, it's like, it's almost, it's almost exactly like integrity. You cannot bend it or break it if it's real confidence. How did I achieve it? I just looked back over my life. This is like a brief synopsis. <laughs> Looking back over my life and realizing that Everything that you would consider, if you were looking at someone else, you would consider these things to be the, the, the qualities of a confident person, or the traits of a confident person. Looking back over my life, I had those traits. Maybe not all at the same time, but all these different situations, it came out in these different ways. And just about covered the list of the traits and that you would see in, in what in you know your outward projection or your outward vision of what a confident person looks like, and then come to the term come to terms with the fact that well that's me, that's not somebody else. That's me looking at my life, and I've held up in all these different situations. I've been confident all these years and didn't really realize it, and. The first thing someone tries to do when they see that you're confident is they try to shake it. Because they want to know if you're being arrogant or if you're really confident. And they will always do that. Because people come across arrogant so often or that, that false status so often that they want to make sure that this is the real deal that they're dealing with. And so they'll push a little bit. They're not going to knock you down, but they're going to push a little bit to see what happens. See, a confident person doesn't need anybody else to say so to be confident. Arrogance relies on the perception of others. That false confidence relies on the perception of others to hold you up. If nobody else sees it, it doesn't work. It's just an air you're putting on. 
like it takes a fair amount of confidence to do these videos it doesn't take much because you'll be surprised if you found out how many people that are comfortable behind the camera or on the camera I should say but would if you met them in person would be really really super shy it's amazing but if you met me in person I'm not I'm not a very shy person I have a tendency to speak my mind some people see that as as arrogant someone that if you upon meeting someone or me in particular someone in general me in particular upon meeting them place them at a lower you know a lower status than yourself but they speak beyond that people like that tend to get insulted when they you know when they have to belittle someone or, or, or place them beneath them to feel like they're up like they're confident those people yeah I tend to I I piss those people off a lot like how dare you be this confident <laughs> like at this point in time I work at a gas station and I get that a lot how dare you be so confident you work at a gas station you I should be able to belittle you kind of attitude well this is what I do for a living this is how I pay my bills this isn't me I've got a lot of different things to pay my bills this is just one of them you know I took a huge pay cut to go work at a gas station so I could not be on the road and so I could be home with my family And I knew before being a truck driver that what I do for a living isn't me. And one of the re one of the things I hated the most about truck driving is that's the first thing they try to do. They try to make that who you are. You are a truck driver. No, that's what I and I kept telling them, no, that's what I do for a living. I am a husband and a father, a musician and an artist. I am not a truck driver. I drive truck. People say, what, what do you do? I drive truck. When I tell people, well, what do you, uh, by, I'm a professional driver by trade, is what I tell them. <laughs> by trade. Not, that's not who I am. And that's why people have a hard time finding that career is because deep down they know that what they do for a living is going to end up becoming who they are and they're going to let it happen <clears throat> I guess I'm confident enough to not need a label or even a job <laughs> for that matter unemployed I am exactly the same confidence level underemployed where I'm at now at a gas station I'm still at the same confidence level but because I'm working at a gas station and people perceive you a certain way because you're in a uniform like when I was driving truck I could wear whatever clothes I wanted and people saw me but of course I'm judged not because of what I'm wearing or who I am. I'm judged because of what I do for a living. I'm, that's how they judge you. Period. There's just no getting around that. So when I'm at this when I'm at this gas station when I'm at work and people kind of whoa step back and they kind of try and treat you like well you're just being arrogant you're an, you're arrogant I'm not arrogant I'm confident this job does not define me whatever I'm doing for a living does not define me it could be my job to just pick up this this these rocks and put them over here and then tomorrow I'm gonna to come back and pick up the same rocks and put them back over there where they were that could be my job and I'd still have the same level of confidence because I'm not what I do for a living and I've learned over the past 40 years that if you're going to put your name on it, 
you might as well do the best job possible that you're capable of. Don't do it half-assed just because, well, I don't like this job. I give my all to whatever I'm doing, so it really doesn't matter what I'm doing. <laughs> if my name's going on it, if I have to send that out with my name on it, or you have to come in and see it, and my name is on it, I'm doing a good job. Because that that's me. That's not the job. The job says slacker. But if you ever came and saw me at work, you'll see that I'm busting my ass most of the time. Sometimes you just, there's no ass to bust because you're, it's possible to get done with all your work. <laughs> but I digress. <laughs> uh, how now I gave you the short version of how I built up my confidence. It just seemed to me that I didn't have a reason to not be confident. I had low self esteem my whole life, and where confidence started for me, actual actually experiencing it as the experiencer instead of experiencing it as the the viewer the person perceiving it in someone else was about the same time I went through and cleaned out my emotional closet of all the, the filth that it just built up and that's what it does it's a snowball effect that builds up and uh, the, all those hurts that were nagging at my self-esteem all the all of that the things that are hold you back childhood and it was most of it was childhood stuff it wasn't stuff that happened in the recent it was stuff that happened in my childhood and I had to come to terms with the fact that you're not a kid anymore. And that stuff doesn't define you. There's no one moment that defines you. We're taught to believe that. And I can tell you from experience, if I can get past it, you can get past it. There's no one moment that defines you. There's no one moment that says, oh, you're a waste of time now. Not one. You will never be a waste of time. I'm a firm believer that the minute you're a waste of time, boom, it's your time to your time it's your time to leave and something will happen to remove you from this place. But I can't really say that because I don't believe that anybody anywhere is considered a waste of time. Not by that thing that we all agree upon as God or source or the hologram, the conscious hologram. <laughs> there's just, there's no reason to hold yourself back by not being confident. The fastest way to become confident, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna swear. I'm warning you, I'm going to swear. I don't do that very often. I swear very often, but I don't warn you very often. The fastest way to confidence is to stop giving a fuck what other people think about you. Because having a lack of confidence is, ha is you're afraid of what other people think. That's what eats away at confidence, is you're afraid of what other people think. That's where you get false confidence, where you get arrogance from, is because you're projecting confidence, but you're still afraid of what other people think. When you're no longer afraid of what other people think, all that's left is confidence. That's, that is all that's left. If what other people think, ooh, excuse me. If what other people think bothers you still, then that's not confidence. You're waiting for some judgment, or you've got it in your head that they've already prejudged you, and that creates anxiety. 
Oh, I know what they're thinking. You don't know what they're thinking. You know what you would be thinking if you were looking at you. And you can't honestly say that because I guarantee you, you ran into someone that's just like you, had a similar life, and you judged them differently than you would judge yourself. I am a firm believer that if you walked into a room that you were sitting in, you would see a completely different person than the person in the suit. You would be like, whoa. Something happened to me back when, because there's different types of confidence. I have, it's been a very long time since I've been afraid of people. I don't care how big they are, I don't care how well trained in, in combat they are. If you're going to beat me up, there's really no point in being afraid of that. Because if I am afraid, that there, I have no opportunity to fight back at all. I've already given up the fight. I've already lost because I've, I'm afraid. So there's nothing to be afraid of. If you're going to take a whooping, take a whooping. <laughs> but the other type of confidence has nothing to do with physical ability or skill or whether or not you're going to get beat up or you're going to be the one beating somebody else up other kind of confidence is mental and emotional that's the kind of confidence I'm getting at because you can be completely confident and not give a fuck what other people think but be terrified in a confrontation where you're about to get your ass beat <laughs> different kind of confidence coming to terms with inevitability just stop worrying some people I, I won't even say some people my wife has anxiety and that's exactly why she has anxiety because she's afraid everybody's judging her and you know what I tell her most people say they're not judging you I tell her they are judging you fuck them <laughs> Who the hell are they? <laughs> Who are they? Because they're only judging you so they can for just a moment quiet the voices in their head that are judging them when it's their own self judging themselves. And I've even been accused of, what do you think, you're perfect? No, I don't think I'm perfect. I'm just comfortable with my not being perfect. I'm comfortable in my skin. That's another thing you got to get a hold of. If you're not comfortable in your skin, you're not going to achieve the same level of confidence that you see in others. You have to be comfortable being you. Your energy is just as valid as anybody else's. Because if you dig down deep enough, you'll find out the part about you that you think isn't good enough is the energy you, you produce, the energy you give off, you, your name, that energy, that song, that unique frequency that each human being gives off, that's your name. And when you disown that, oh, it's not good enough, oh, it's not good enough, that builds up and builds up and builds up. Like a snowball. Only this is more like soot and it's dark and it's black and it's heading down after you. And then most people experience that as an anxiety attack. You have to get comfortable with your, your, yourself, your flesh, your energy, every piece of yourself. Because once you become comfortable with you, you don't care what anybody else. Think about this. When you're in love with someone, and I mean not, not in lust with someone, but in love with someone. When you truly, deeply care about someone, you don't give a fuck what anybody says about it. They could be cheating on you. And you, not my man or not my girl. Right? But the slightest thought that someone might be judging you for something that you don't like about yourself 
and it starts an avalanche of anxiety. And now the self esteem level drops. Sometimes slowly, sometimes gone. When it drops like instantaneously, that's when the anxiety attack happens. That's when that big ball of soot, that snowball effect, that's when it lands on you. <laughs> <laughs> confidence is nothing more than being comfortable being you I say get away from the ego stop trying to be somebody else stop trying to be someone you're not because that's why you're not confident because you spent your whole life saying you're not good enough I gotta be this person and so you go out and you're terrified that everybody can see through your mask and that's what makes you not confident. And the ones that are arrogant use the mask so well that they just assume no one can see them. And so you've covered up, well sure, you've covered up all the things you think are flaws, but now you're an asshole. So now they're judging you for that. <laughs> So it's a catch-22. You're damned if you do, damned if you don't. Might as well just go ahead and get comfortable in your skin. Comfortable with every thought in your head. Comfortable with every action you've ever performed, good or bad. You can't undo it. Stop worrying about it. If you wouldn't go back and undo the greatest time of your life, then stop thinking you're going to go back and undo the worst time in your life. Or the worst embarrassment of your life. Or the worst anything of your life. You're not going to go back and fix it. Take the time to come to terms with it. Because it's always going to be in there. You can run from it. You can ignore it. You can do all kinds of things to, to not have to deal with it. But the minute you acknowledge it, and let it just sink in and become part of you then you're cool with it then you have confidence because you're not afraid that everybody's judging you because if you notice it's everything you don't like about yourself magically that's what everybody's picking out about you When I can guarantee you, yes, they're judging you, but they're probably not picking out the things you are because they're not in your head. <laughs> Even if they can hear you, they're not in there. They can only hear the shit you're saying too loud, like, oh my God, I have a big, huge zit. And then they look and there's the big, huge zit because you just yelled it in the room because you're uncomfortable with the zit. <laughs> Before, when they looked at you, they just saw those ugly shoes you were wearing, but you don't care about the shoes because you really are comfortable with those shoes. You love those shoes. Those are your favorite shoes. But everybody else thinks they're ugly, but you don't care because you like those shoes. Why can't it work the same way for you? Why can't you become comfortable enough with you that it doesn't matter who likes or dislikes you? That's where confidence comes from. And when you stop judging yourself, you'll stop judging others. Well, at least I'm not. But yeah, but you're something else. Somebody somewhere is picking out something to talk shit about you about. So there's something to judge you about. There's always going to be something to judge you about. But when you stop judging you, you'll stop judging everybody else. Because there won't be any need for it. There won't be any need for comparison. There won't be any need to feel like you're above them. My default setting is you're equal to me until you prove otherwise. Give everybody just enough rope to hang themselves with. Whatever you do with it is what you do with it. You ain't hanging me with it because I'll be confident. Because I don't care what you think. You can point out something you don't like and I'll... <laughs> What, do you want me to break down in tears and change my whole life around for you? Or you really think you're that important in my life? <laughs> they 
there's a good possibility I wouldn't change anything in my life for someone that is important to my life. <laughs> What's a stranger think they're going to get from me? Wow, it's really sunny today, and that changed my lighting. And the lighting in this video is going to be all messed up. <laughs> That's a funny thing to notice. Huh, I'll have to change my lighting setup. Anyway, yeah, it's uh, not complicated at all. I didn't say it wasn't. I didn't say it was easy. I just said it wasn't complicated. It's very simple, in fact. It just might not be that easy. Do you understand what I'm saying by that? Because coming to terms with yourself, inside and out, every thought, every feeling, color of the skin, texture of the skin, what you meant to so-and-so, who, what you mean to so-and-so, what you mean to yourself. You have to come to terms with everything. You have to come to terms with the fact that just because you weren't so-and-so's cup of tea doesn't diminish you at all. Because, yeah, you weren't so-and-so's cup of tea, but how many people did you turn down before you got to so-and-so. So obviously you're somebody's cup of tea. You just didn't get the cup of tea you were after. <laughs> that doesn't mean you're not worth it. That doesn't mean it's, it, that you're not somebody's cup of tea. That just means that that one person didn't like what you had to offer. And most people will shatter their entire existence over that one person. Why would you give any one person that much power over you? The only person that should have that much power over you is you. You should be the beginning and end of your day. The cause of your happiness, your joy, and your bliss. If you leave those tasks to others, they're going to fuck it up. That's a fact. And then you've got no one to blame but yourself when, oh, they damaged it. You shouldn't have handed it to them. Be happy. Share it with them. But don't give it to them and say, it's your job to keep that all intact and don't break it. Don't, don't break it. And don't break it. You know, that, that's like saying, don't look at that thing over there. What thing? <laughs> Don't break it. Don't break what? <laughs> I am happy. It is nobody's job to make me happy. I'm confident. It's nobody's job to make me confident. I believe in me. I am worth it. I had to find it for myself. That's why I'm not telling you, oh, you have it in you, and blah, 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 I'm not going to talk you up. That's your job. I can tell you that you were born enough. You are enough. You are valid. And the only thing keeping you from seeing that is you. And I don't care, well, so-and-so said something one time, and it brought me down. It wasn't so-and-so's fault. Sure, so-and-so's an asshole or a bitch or whatever gender they are, or whatever foul language applies to them. But it was your decision to believe what they said and to take it to heart and carry it for the rest of your life. Or even just for the rest of the day. Try it. Try not caring what other people think. Just try that.
Don't even get in and fix everything. Just try not caring what other people think. As soon as you get to that point where you don't care what other people think, you'll start to see that that fear reaction that causes you to not be confident stops almost immediately. Because it's got nothing to feed on, which is your own fears. You walk into a room, tell yourself this. If they don't walk up to me and say it to my face, that's not what they're thinking. Start small. If I don't hear it from their mouth, they didn't say it. The trick is you have to believe that. I don't care what kind of looks they're giving you. I don't care how much they're staring at you. I don't care if they look at you sideways with a dirty look on their face or shooting daggers at you, whatever. Until they, till the words leave their mouth, assume they're not saying anything bad about you. Assume they're not thinking anything bad about you and believe it. Baby steps. Maybe just try it at the gas station where there's fewer people. And breathe through it. If you've t learned a meditation technique, breathe through it. Breathe through that moment. You're having an anxiety attack, breathe through it. And remember, if the words didn't leave their mouth, they didn't say anything. And they're probably not even thinking about you. That's your own mind running amok. Just relax. When you get to that point where you don't care what other people think, you'll stop hearing other people think. <laughs> but 90% of the chatter in your head is you. 90% of that. That's what they mean by silence the mind. Stop worrying so much. Too many mind. What was that movie? The Last Samurai. The guy said, too many minds. He said, what do you mean? He said, mind the girls. Mind this. Mind that. Your mind is everywhere. But your mind, your mind is everywhere but where it needs to be. If you're in a supermarket, your mind shouldn't be on, oh, they're charging me, oh, they should be on, I need bologna, cheese, milk, eggs. <laughs> and the better you get at it, the better you get at believing that nobody's, unless it comes out of their mouth, nobody says, any, no one's got anything bad to say about you. Once you come to terms with that and believe it and get better at it, <clears throat> the more confident you're going to feel. Now, once you get the hang of that, work on the reasons why you thought they were judging you in the first place. And I'm not saying fix or correct anything. I challenge any one of you come to terms with it before you fix or correct it because once you come to terms with it correcting it won't seem so important 
and when it stops seeming so important it'll correct itself but you didn't hear that from me yeah you did anyway <laughs> <laughs> it's very simple but it might not be the easiest thing you've ever done keep working at it don't give up remember not even me you should be able to walk up to me in a clown suit and be confident that I'm looking at you and not the clown suit you should be able to walk up to me wearing a burlap sack and a tinfoil hat and be confident that I'm looking at you and not your outfit. It's just that simple. Confidence. Confidence isn't belittling others. Confidence isn't stepping on others to make yourself look good. That's arrogance. Confidence relies on nobody but you. And if your confidence is shakable, if somebody can break it, keep at it. That just means you need more practice at it. Because remember, most people have spent their entire lives being afraid of what other people think. And we pretend, and a person that really doesn't care what other people think, doesn't go around saying, well, I don't give a fuck. They just, actions speak louder than words. They just don't give a fuck. I don't need you beneath me to feel good about myself. I feel great about myself. And you shouldn't need me beneath you. And if you try to get me down there, good luck with that. If you have to ask, hey man, let me stand up above you, then the answer is no. If you have to try to force me beneath you, the answer is no. If you have your, if you brought your own thing to the table, have at it. I brought my own thing to the table. Let's do it. <laughs> Confidence. <laughs> But sadly, because I could keep going on confidence, I really could. Sadly, we are past the 30 minute mark. Probably past it a couple of minutes ago, but that's not the point. Uh, if you have enjoyed this episode, please click the like button. You can favorite the video if you want. Uh, please comment down below because. I like to hear from people and I want this to be a discussion if there's something about what I've said that you don't understand or maybe you have something you can add to it or maybe you just want to do a little back and forth about it let's do it it's I want these videos to be a discussion but uh, if you would like to keep coming back and getting more information or you just like the sound of my voice then go ahead and hit the subscribe button. But until next time, you hang in there.